The Crickets were the American rock and roll band. With a career that spanned almost five decades coupled with millions of record sales, there's no denying this musical group's excellence. Many of their hit songs like Not Fade Away, That'll Be The Day, I Fought The Law, Peggy Sue, and More Than I Can Say are considered rock classics. They formed in Lubbock, Texas in 1957. The founding members were Buddy Holly, Nick Sullivan, and J.J. Allison, although shortly after forming the group, bassist Joe B. Malden was brought aboard. They were known for being one of the first rock and roll outfits entirely self-contained. They wrote, performed, produced, and recorded all their own music, and were among the first rock groups to employ techniques like multi-track recording and overdubbing that later became standard. But their true claim to fame was being one of the first bands to make rock and roll music accessible to their audience. They helped set the template of what rock and roll was about. Their first hit record, That'll Be The Day, was released May of 1957. It peaked at number 3 on the Billboard Top 100 chart on September 16, 1957. Buddy Holly died in a horrific plane crash in 1959. After his death, the Crickets continued to tour and record with different lineups of band members well into the 21st century. Join Facts First as we reflect on this wildly influential band. We'll be discussing how many of the band members who have been a part of the Crickets lineup over the years have died. Buddy Holly In early 1959, 22-year-old Buddy Holly embarked on a tour across the American Midwest, playing shows at various ballrooms and auditoriums. The tour, dubbed the Winter Dance Party, kicked off on January 23rd in Milwaukee, during what was one of the coldest winters in recorded history. The Crickets traveled in a heated bus, but unfortunately it was prone to mechanical failure. So on one evening, after the bus had petered out once again, Holly chartered a plane to take him and his tour partners to the next gig. On February 3, 1959, the Crickets frontman boarded an airplane along with Richie Valens and J.P. Big Bopper Richardson not far from Clear Lake, Iowa. Tragically, minutes after takeoff, the craft crashed, killing everyone on board almost instantly. Holly's bassist at the time, Waylon Jennings, was haunted by the events of that evening for decades, as he had given away his seat to Richardson, who was under the weather with the flu, just moments before the flight took off. Buddy Holly's plane crash is considered one of the most tragic occurrences in the history of rock and roll. It's been dubbed the day the music died. Tommy Alsup Alsup was a member of Buddy Holly's touring band for the Winter Dance Party shows. He also played lead on songs like It's So Easy and Lonesome Tears. After Buddy Holly's plane crashed, investigators initially thought Alsop had been killed. He'd given Holly his wallet so he could use his ID to collect a piece of mail on his behalf. In truth, he almost did die on that doomed flight, but after losing a coin toss to Richie Valens, he lost his seat. Alsop was active in the music industry for almost 70 years. After the winter dance party came to an abrupt and dramatic end, also continued as a rockabilly and western swing guitarist. He died after complications from hernia surgery at age 85 in Springfield, Missouri in 2017. Before we tell you more about the Crickets members who've died, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Nikki Sullivan Sullivan was one of the original members of the Crickets, although he quickly lost interest in the band months after joining. His guitar work played a significant role in Buddy Holly's early success. During his brief career, he performed on 27 out of the 32 songs that Holly and the Crickets put out. Since he bore a slight resemblance to Buddy Holly, being skinny with glasses, he was often referred to as the other guy with glasses in critics' reviews and magazine articles. After the Crickets' appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show on December 1, 1957, the band briefly went on a hiatus to gear up for their next recording. During this time, Sullivan announced he had permanently left the band. He later revealed he did this because he was struggling to keep up with the intensive tour schedule. He took a job working for Sony. In 1978, he reunited with Malden, Allison, and the Crickets' new lead singer, Sonny Curtis, for a one-off performance at a Buddy Holly festival. Sullivan died of a heart attack at age 66 on April 6, 2004. Jerry Naylor after Holly's death in 1959, Naylor became the lead singer for the Crickets. Jerry Allison, who had become the sole owner of the Crickets' name, and the band's manager, H. Daniel Whitman, offered Naylor the position after signing with Liberty Records. Naylor recorded with the Crickets as the band's lead singer until 1964. Their first hit with him was Don't Ever Change, 
which reached number 5 on the UK charts. The Beatles covered the track live on the BBC in 1963. After leaving the Crickets, Naylor had success with his song, Is This All There Is to a Honky Tonk, in 1974. It peaked at number 31 on the country charts in 1975. In 2013, Naylor, who was then 74, revealed that during his days touring with the Crickets and beyond, he used his fame as a cover to work as a secret agent for the CIA. He claimed he was recruited over 100 times to spy for his country under the guise of being a touring musician. Allegedly, his first mission was in Japan in 1968 when he was asked to collect a briefcase from Taiwan. During one of his later missions, he helped the U.S. derail the presidential campaign of an ally of Colonel Gaddafi. Naylor further claimed that other U.S. stars had to have been recruited for similar jobs. He died of natural causes on December 5, 2019, at age 80. Joe B. Malden Rolling Stone once described Malden's bass playing with the crickets as having set the pulse of rock and roll music. He was born and raised in West Texas. When he was 17, he began playing music with his friend Buddy Holly and his new band, The Crickets. After Holly's death in 1959, The Crickets reformed with a new vocalist, Earl Sinks, and lead guitarist, Sonny Curtis. In the 60s, Malden briefly left the group. In 1964, he enrolled in the U.S. Army. After being discharged two years later, he started working as a recording engineer at Gold Star Studios. By the mid-70s, he had rejoined The Crickets. He remained with the group until he lost his battle with cancer on February 7, 2015, at age 74. Earl Sinks Sinks started performing with Bob Wills at the age of 12. In 1958, he recorded two singles under the alias Henry. After Buddy Holly broke up with the recording incarnation of the Crickets near the end of 1958, Sinks was brought on to record with the band as lead singer, since he had a similar singing style to Holly. After Holly's death in 1959, Sinks recorded and performed with the Crickets on the album In Style with the Crickets. His association with the band ended in 1960 after a disagreement. Throughout the 60s, Sinks acted in a number of low-budget films and TV shows. From 1966 to 2013, he recorded and occasionally toured with the band The Marvells. Since the 70s, he shifted focus to the business side of things and ran Ace of Hearts Records. He died at age 77 at his home on May 13, 2017. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite song by Buddy Holly and the Crickets? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.